Okay, I'm working on the inside cover and the little book that I'm going to put in there. You see me colouring up this. It's from the original spine. I've cut it in half, rounded the corners. And it's going to sit in here. Um, the, I've been using a few of these. I think these are cute. Um, and I'll be tucking things under them and around them. And they are the stencil marks from Tim Holtz. Um, where are we? So they're going to go like that. I've also been using the tags from Graphic 45's tag album. That, that looks like this. It's a regular size tag album. So it's all, it's got this dome in it and everything. A lot of people go to the trouble of showing you how to put the paper around it, but I can't be bothered with that. That's too much effort for me. Um, so I have darkened the edges, put my paper down. Again, this is all from the Steampunk Spells Graphic 45 paper. And I'm using Tim's, um, I forget what you call these them. are the industrial stickers from Tim Holtz. I'm going to change the colour of them. Now I'll do that because I know I'm going to be using these through this waterfall album with my photos, etc. I am going to colour those up beforehand. They're, they're made of a metal kind of, a, um, it's a metallic. Metallic, so I'll probably use alcohol inks to colour those. I have put the alcohol ink on, but it really needs to. I'll just go through and lightly sand the, the tops just to bring out the detail put that detail back into the patterns that are on there and I'll use them around my photos and what have you and I just wanted the same tones these are only going to come off these are sticky really sticky and they're metal so they they come off quite easily and all these bits in between you can use as well you want to get the detail back in there so you've got a bit of pattern so you run the sander over it if you're going to use alcohol ink you can do the same with paint but I kind of like that translucent effect for this particular project so with this one run your sander over to bring the pattern back for that warm look or you can do it very precisely and you bring the pattern back and then you would be using these wherever on your project you just peel them out okay, nice and easy in strips I like that and the fact that I've put alcohol ink on there hasn't gone seeped underneath and done anything to the adhesive so those are going to go on quite nicely uh, and if you don't like what you've made well that's no biggie because you just put some more over the top but I've also put a coat of the glaze over because if you just put the alcohol ink on there it marks up too much um, so I've decided that I'm putting the glaze over the top, which makes it look quite cool. And I'll be using those. You can see the detail along here. And it just saves all that issue of cutting around the hole. Um, I haven't got much patience, so it didn't work for me. Um, and I'm inserting them into the book like, like so. But I wanted to be able to utilise... The backs of these as, as well um, on this side and I wanted to strap it across there I put a little bit on um, Facebook to see if anybody knew what this was and of course it's Tim Hulse craft the scene because I was actually going to make a strap out of it and I thought well why am I doing that because he has the perfect solution in his um, you've probably seen these come up as little bands and elastics so I decided that I would thread them. After I have covered them, I'll thread those bands through these holes and create the elastic right around and thread some of the word bands. Which ones are these? Observations. But I wanted to colour them a little first so they're not quite so boring and the words stand out more. And I'm again going to use my uh, vintage range of vintage patinas on them. And I'm going to colour them off and sand them back. And then I'll be using those elastics to thread through the work. So I will colour these up. 
and you'll see me just thread these through like so and to make them um, to make them taut enough so that I can slip another tag in behind I'll bring them over and bring them back through here so we'll have something like like this and I'll probably arrange them something like that and then that gives me an option if I'm going to insert a tag where's a tag but I can give you a bit of an example these aren't finished ones but I can insert a tag in there any sort of tag any sort of little memorabilia something to put my um, journaling just under there and that will sit in the book like so where this would be glued down to this part so I can put a tag in there and then I can turn it over like so and have a tag in here in my book. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm just going to colour these up and get on with it. So great, these little elastics are so handy. People have said to me, what do you use them for? Well, there's a lot of things you can use them for. This being one. this vintage uh, metal paint on there. Uh, I'm only just to sand it off um, and see what I come up with. A lot of people, people say, well, why do you put all that stuff on there and then take it away? But it's all about the layering and just to find the look that I really want. So sometimes I'll take it all away and sometimes it will, I'll, I'll just sand it lightly depending on how I like how it turns out. Okay, I put it on there and I sanded it off and I put it on quite thick so it was a bit of an effort to sand it off because I put, this isn't just using an alcohol ink, this is using a metal paint. So don't be crazy like me and go that far. Then I decided um, to, I needed a bit more colour that looked still boring to me. So I'm going to put a little bit of archival, this is just archival reinker, you can use the rust colour if you've got the old pads, you can use sienna. But I love using the um, so I'm just going to put a little bit down and rub it over the top of these and it just makes it a little bit more interesting. After I've finished this, let them dry for a bit because you've got to remember this is I'm on metal and I'm putting archival ink, which is oil based. It's going to take a bit of drying uh, and then I'll coat it with the glaze. <laughs> do some playing. I do this all the time and I was just using up leftover product and seeing what I could come up with and 
then decided to make it into the tones of a, um, the, the folder I'm doing. That's how I experiment. I just take things. I kind of like the way the um, alcohol ink goes over the 3D stamp paint. Um, I'm going to ink the edges. This, I've done this on glossy paper and I'm going to ink the edges of this so I can make it into something. going on here. I've used that coloured in piece to put a cover on this flap and I've used it on this side which is going to become the cover of this book here that is now fixed down. Um, my next step is I'm going to start layering up this book here and on this side I've decided to do something different. It's no good me giving you the measurements for these things because I'm, I'm not sure where, what distance you would do your spine but I'm just going to make a, um, a simple fold folded album like so and I'm going to be covering it with the steampunk spells paper and whatever else I can think of and it'll open up and have places in here for lots of tags that I've made lots of ones that are made with oops sorry lots of ones that I've made with metal and these will be able to slide in here have photos journaling on the back maybe photos journaling on the back of the actual pages i haven't quite decided yet and the top page will have a fold out on it because it's just about the right size to fit a tag there we'll see and we'll have one page like that a couple of plain ones and this one at the back here which will mirror mirror this one so that it's the front one so that it's nice. I'm not sure whether I'll catch that together yet or quite what I'll do there but we'll see as we go along um, and I'll be leaving these so that if I want to I can use my um, metal frames and put these in here. You'll also see me attach these. I'm thinking of attaching these across here. Um, and after I've created the book, the last step will be to actually put this piece together. Uh, now this is flimsy as it is, so we need to reinforce it. So I'll be reinforcing it down here. And I'll also be reinforcing this area here, because once you close up this, this is going to take a lot of pressure. And we've yet to suspend the um, pocket watch in there, in the right place. So it's going to be... Um, a very a very sturdy 
whatever I decide is going to be very sturdy it has to be to be able to take the pressure and not bend and um, so I will we'll do that as well um, also have to be very careful about how I suspend this watch up uh, I'll let you know what I'm going to do as I go along a lot of the photos that um, I'm going to be placing down in here uh, are ones that Jason has taken and they're all from around our home and some of them are just little fun ones that we've done where we've been being silly and our wearing top hats and doing crazy things as we're known to do so we'll start off by putting a photo in the back here
pages of the book and I need to shore up this area here where I have the LeBlanc stamped image in behind. Now I have coloured this up a little bit more just so that it matches in with the paper. And I have made this hinge which is go this is, has Tyvek on it and card to make it nice and strong. And I've coloured this piece of chipboard so that when it that's the bit that's going to show if you happen to have a look underneath there. So I wanted it to be the same colour. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert stick this down but I'm also going to stick it to this hinge here so it fixes firmly on there and use this flap here to fix this down to. That will make this strong because this is a, a very um, bulky with all the things I've put in a folder and it's quite heavy with the metal I've got in it so this would become crushed if I had, didn't have it um, strong and bend. I'll probably put a reinforcing under here, but that's not a difficult thing to do. Anybody could do that. I also want to suspend this up here. So I, I need to build this up so it will sit there quite strongly because this will open and shut all the time. And it also needs to be put in exactly the right place because when you close this, and we have to make sure this is a strong binding, you need to be able to see this clock through in the right position. And if I don't get it positioned right, it's going to look awfully strange. Um, I feel because I have put so much into this album that I am going to have to put some sort of reinforcing in because this album up here is on the side and it also has lots of things in it. Um, I'm going to have to do something else too about binding this. I wish I'd thought about it before because I've got some extremely strong magnets and it would have really helped if I had just put inserted them under the paper here so that, that those magnets would catch and hold. And I mean the really, really strong ones. Um, and then that would have just been easy opening. We also have to put these on. That's not a difficult thing. Um, you just spread this one on and uh, the, this will cover where the braid comes through just to give this little touches and that also has to line up so if you're making one of these remember not to make yours as bulky as I've made mine um, or instead of using the flats that Tim has provided you can actually do a hinge system up here which I might show on another um, video that I'll be putting out um, I'm glad to be back and putting these videos out. I know it's been a bit of a while, but we've had some family things happening. And uh, family always comes first. So, that's what we're going to do with that. I'll probably do it on camera, maybe, maybe not. But it's, it's not a difficult thing to do. Just simple, nice little hinge. Colour up this piece, insert it under. And you can also do something about shoring up these sides so it's nice and strong. I have lots of photos at the end um, of the video. Again, I apologise for taking so long um, to get this out to you with the issues with uh, the, not only the family but also the video and our camera system not being up to scratch, which it is now again. So, catch you next time. Okay, here we have it. This is the folder that I've made. I've changed, had to change this part of it here because um, I've made this so bulky with the things I'm putting in it and the things I'm going to put in it that it was hard to line up this clock. It would have been easier if it was nice and firm and I haven't put so much in it. So what I have done is I've put that clock in, but I've put in the whole clock and it still operates like a clock so it opens like this, but you've got that nice piece on the back here. Uh, that looks good in there anyway. And you come into the album on the side. And all the embellishments come from the Steampunk Spells papers, Graphic 45. Um, the, these are from the pockets. And everyone has got little photos in, uh, little bits of journaling um, to go through it. And I've done some wild and wacky things with the photos. I really enjoy having photos and you'll see it all through what I've done here where I you have the original photo and I take other photos out of context and I put them in on top of and embellish the original photo. 
I don't do it with Photoshop because I prefer a more random look. Um, I, I don't. I like texture. I don't like smooth things. So I haven't used Photoshop. I've just phys physically cut them out, fussy cut them out, and put them in places where they might not want to you know, wanted to be. Um, filling up the frames with photos, little things, using that little tab that I showed you how to make there. Making, putting photos in interesting situations like this particular one, um, and using Tim Holtz bird cage over the top. Just lots of pieces that you'll recognise, things that you'll recognise, and cutting whole tags out of photos. It's fun, and using on the edge dies to make these embellishments on the end. All the way through, you'll see um, the metal that I, I showed you colouring earlier, and. The reason, you also saw me originally put these over here, but it made it impossible to open this album. So I just swapped that out for a piece of 10 second studio metal that matched the bits that I had down here so we could open it up. But it is fairly bulky, um, and you get to the end here and it's going to be harder for you to open, but it's still very strong. And all these have got little, little bits where we can journal and do things and so it's fun to to go through and find all the different things that are in there um, some of them have got metal embellishments on them just lots of fun find them in your stash and do them changing us this, this uh, Brian wasn't in there originally uh, and using some of the arrows from Tim Holtz and the all the words that are go through are actually the ones from the alphabets that you get in sheets with the graphic 45 papers so they're handy to have over the side because I wasn't Using that watch suspended here, I put a little valve in there. But I kind of like the idea of, of lighting it as well, so I'll see about doing that at some stage. Be very wary uh, when you are putting these across here because you can see some damage here. And that I'm going to correct that, and you can do it with your distress inks. And I'll just use the distress inks to take away that damage because I've removed the offending piece from over here, which was a little um, dome that I had put in there. So you've got to always be aware when you close things. Um, they're going to do damage. In the past when I've had something heavy like this I have even used cut out acetate and just put it over the top and it works really well um, and it's clear, crystal clear. Another thing you can do is what I've done up in this part here um, which this is just me using lefto leftover ice resin um, and I've just spread it over a photo. That means that those photos won't get damaged. That's strong stuff. But it's not something you're going to do on a regular basis, but it does work. Um, all these are made, these um, are some of Tim Holtz cutouts that you can buy in die form. We've got crackle paints on there. Um, all the images here, again, all from the Graphic 45 papers that I've cut out and um, put, put through to, to embellish. And some of the chipboard pieces as well open this up and you've got metal here, um, tags, this has a lot more to go in it but we'll just change as we go along. These diff different things in here mean things um, to us that wouldn't mean anything to you and you can personalise your albums that way and it's fun and I like putting crazy little hats and things. All those embellishments are actually from one of Tim Holtz's sets as well. Um, there's our new little baby doing crazy things like putting glasses on them um, and if you look at the details on this these little straps here um, actually come from off your suitcase die I used to use that particular strapping uh, sorry what's it called Vin uh, valise it's a large die from um, Tim Holtz I also used it when I made that configuration book in another video uh, it has nice corners on it as well and using the cogs die, Timos cogs die, um, that looks great as well. Lots of fun. Little bits and pieces all the way through with tabs you pull out. Using my glossy accent, using um, the metal frame, and putting them in there so you can put lots of tags in. And over here, it's Brian riding his bike, mimicking the steampunk image here, um, crackle paint on grunge board, making little um, hearts and making the wings, some things playing around. Um, the butterfly frenzy die here, layering them up, You're still keeping with the 
steampunk um, papers so I can lay them up through there and on the side um, again a heart done with a crackle put little cogs on it a photo in the background a photo out of context that I've put glossy accents over the top and using um, my stencils to put this it's the raised stencil from Tim Holtz to use modeling cream, beaver decor and modeling cream and putting that in there to make it stand out. You see that again here with the, the gold, how that stands out beautifully. But in the background, another image that I've put in there. Um, done it again here, putting all the family together. Photos that actually don't belong together, but um, putting them together so we can get everybody in. And extra ones where I've used the fairy metal effects to put little details on the photos just for fun and the modeling cream to put little details on the photos and the modeling cream in the background there to um, show up the photo more um, more Brian playing his violin Brian playing his piano um, little photos around, metal again, a uh, little box and places to journal, all lots of fun and you'll have fun doing all these sorts of things through your albums. This opens out and we go through that whole thing again where we've put um, modelling cream and ferro effect, metal effect around and a little bit of um, the chipboard pieces back there, more photos here and that's it. It's um, the one thing I'll say about the album is don't make it as fat as I have because I've got more things that need to go in there. And if you do, um, one of the things that I'm considering doing is I've actually got some old leather belts and they're skinny and they've got really cool buckles on them. And I will attach the belt along the back here. Um, I'll have to screw it down and bring it over so I can buckle it on the side here or buckle it on that side there and give it um, a lot more strength. So there is, I mean it stays together fine but, uh, and you can bring these over. But oh, I kind of like the idea of having that leather buckle there. We'll see, we'll see if I get there. There we go. And thank you very much for watching.